Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Lauren and I'm here in my fabric shop, Guthrie and Ganny, to share with you lots of different dressmaking fabrics in the theme of warm and cozy fabrics. I find that I get asked this question a lot at this time of year and I think that warm fabrics can mean different things to different people. Um, it certainly can to me anyway and I think it probably depends on where you live in the world and how cold it is there maybe where you grew up and how warm or cold it was as you were growing up, maybe what type of house you live in or where you work or how, even how you travel to work and what temperature it is and probably just like down to your own natural kind of individual body makeup as well. I for one know that I am generally always feeling cold. I love to feel warm and I love hugging a hot water bottle in the winter time. Whereas my husband is the complete opposite and it can literally be snowing outside and he will just go out with a t-shirt or a jumper on and he doesn't seem to feel the cold at all. So I wanted to talk to you about, the fab about fabrics and how they can be warm in different ways so that when you come to choose a fabric and you want it to feel warm, the kind of things that you might look for or how what a warm fabric might mean for you. So really the key things are fibre content and what the fabric is actually made from. And then you might wanna look at the weave of the fabric or the physical thickness of it as well. So how like physically thick and chunky does the fabric feel? And then also in terms of the garment as a whole, whether you're going to line it or not as well. And then what sort of lining you might choose to make a garment feel warmer. So there's lots of different factors to sort of consider there. But the first one I'm gonna cover is the fiber content. So what is the fabric actually made from? And the warmest type of fabric will be a fabric that has got wool in it. So whether it is a wool mix or it's 100% wool, the higher percentage of wool that is in it, the warmer it will be because wool has naturally insulating properties. That's how the sheep stay warm after all and fabric that is made of wool will keep you warmer than a non-wool counterpart just because of the nature of how the fibres are and they keep you warm. So really if you want to be warm with minimal layers then wool is a good fabric to go for because it naturally keeps your body warm. Now I would say the main thing that comes up next when people consider using a wool fabric for their dressmaking projects is how to launder it and how to care for it and you know generally speaking wool should be either dry cleaned or depending on the wool itself it might be that you can use it with a gentle hand wash or it might be you have a wool cycle on your sewing machine you know you can put it through a gentle wash in the sewing machine at a cool temperature some wools you can do that with some wools you can't um, Generally, you're going to find that fabric, the fabric care recommendations are to dry clean wool, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you can wash them in the machine, but it, it's, it's going to be difficult to find somebody who's already like tested that for you and is happy to sort of, um, you know, take that responsibility of saying, yes, you can machine wash the wool. It's probably something you're going to have to test yourself um, and see whether it actually works or not. So I think really that is the main consideration after actually choosing whether you want to use wool or not for a dressmaking project is how you feel like you're going to want to launder it afterwards. Are you going to want to dry clean it or go through some sort of like gentle hand washing situation to, to launder it? So that's something to bear in mind with wool. Of course, with wool, there are different weights of wool as well. So some wools are thicker and more suitable for making coats and jackets. So we have a really lovely range of different wools in the shop that are suitable for that. I've got a few over here to show you. And as you can see, you know, they do have a decent bit of sort of thickness and weight to them. This one's really nice, it's got a kind of checked finish to it and when you look closely you can see nice little colours running through as well which is lovely um, and you know when I actually feel the fabric it physically feels thick, it feels you know sort of fluffy and it is a wool mix so it's 74% wool, 18% viscose and then 8% polyester so you know it's a pretty high wool content and a coat or a jacket made out of this will 
keep you pretty warm and um, this is another one here that is a wool fabric but it's got it's a check but it's almost like a sort of herring weave check so it's got lots of beautiful texture in it really nice color as well and it is 100% wool so um it's going to be that even bit warmer and it actually feels quite soft you know some wools can feel different some can feel sort of scratchy and a little bit itchy some can feel softer this particular one i would say feels pretty soft and um, and it's it's going to be that same sort of thickness that is good for coats and jackets and that kind of thing whereas these next two wools that i've got are much lighter weight and are going to be more suited to trousers really um, or you could make dresses with them as well and if i open this one out you'll see that it has got much more floppiness to it now you wouldn't want to be making a coat out of that because it's just physically too thin um, it is a wool mix as well let me just check the tag it's 90 percent wool and four percent lycra so it's got a little bit of stretch in it and this would make a beautiful pair of trousers um, so something like the merchant and mills eve or the nina lee portobello trousers would be really nice because you as you can see it does have that draping movement in it and um, i will also share the link to the blog post that goes with this video in the description to it and in there in that blog post you'll find links to lots of patterns and fabrics as well for all these different types of fabrics that i'm showing you but i just want to give you like a general overview in this video of things you might want to consider but you can get all of these things online this one here is also a lighter weight wool fabric it's again 90 um 94 percent wool and six percent lycra so again it's got that little bit of stretch in it but when i hold some up you'll see got that lovely sort of floppiness to it and um, so it is going to be good for skirts or trousers or dresses you would be able to use to make that as well and it's going to be nice and warm it does feel i would say it feels fairly soft as well like having that next to your skin i mean i don't think i have particularly have sensitive skin but i think that feels soft enough just to have next to your skin so it wouldn't be that you necessarily had to line that or anything so yeah wool's definitely going to be technically speaking the warmest just because of its natural um you know warm properties but you can get it in lots of different weights the other type of fabric i wanted to mention is water repellent fabric which might keep you warm in terms of keeping you dry and generally i would say if you're dry you're probably going to feel warmer than if you were if you were wet and also that type of fabric might help to keep the wind out somewhat as well just because it tends to be more densely woven so in the shop we have just a few different colorways and designs of the british millerine waxed canvas which is a really densely woven cotton canvas that has then been coated with a waxed finish which does sort of repel the water so it's not waterproof um, but it, it is like water repellent or water resistant so you can see the water beads on the surface when you sort of flick it on and um, so that type of fabric is going to be good for jackets and that sort of thing i've used it to make the closet core kelly anorak before and um, but any sort of kind of you know jacket pattern would be fine um, we do only have a small range of them available at the moment and that is because um, the, the sort of supply and availability of the different colourways from Millerine is just quite limited at the moment um, and they don't have a huge amount of stock um, really for us um, that we can stock it as, as regularly as we would otherwise want to but it is something that we always sort of keep open and you know hopefully eventually stock will come back again but um, I wanted to mention it as we do have a few of them and hopefully it will come back in the future so you can always email us about that if you want to be kept updated as to when they are back in stock okay so now on to the weave of different fabrics or like the physical thickness and kind of texture of them obviously fabrics made from loads and loads of different types of fibers can all physically feel a little bit thicker and sometimes i'm not sure like technically speaking whether they would necessarily keep you warmer but sometimes just generally having something that is physically thicker you know does does just create that feeling of warmth and sort of coziness doesn't it we we have different associations with things don't we and that can make us feel certain things and make us feel kind of warm and cozy and you know physically thicker plumpier fabrics can do that even though sort of technically speaking they might not actually necessarily be that much warmer 
so I'm going to go through a few different types of thicker fabrics now and explain them to you and also suggest what types of things would be good for them as well. So first of all, I've got a twill weave fabric. Now, although this fabric is physically quite thin, um, if you compared it to like a plain weave viscose, it does feel a little bit thicker because it's got that classic twill weave. So when you look closely at the lines on the fabric, um, you, know, you can just see that sort of little texture to it. So, you know, if you made a garment out of this type of twill fabric, and a twill weave viscose fabric and you layered it up with some leggings or tights and maybe like a vest or a long sleeve top or something or a nice cozy cardigan underneath then you know you can still feel warm in something like this and just physically having something that's got a bit more weight to it you know can contribute to that if you're looking for something that's got a lot of sort of swishiness or drape or maybe you want to make like a nice long dress with lots of gathers or something then you know that type of fabric is the best sort of fabric to use and just using something that's got that twill weave will make it feel a little bit heavier make it feel a little bit thicker then i've got a couple of corduroys to show you so corduroy you know quite a classic autumn winter fabric comes in various different thicknesses all referring to the whale count so the whale count is how many of those sort of lines or ridges in the cord are within a specific um, measurement usually it's an inch so as you can see this one's a bit chunkier and thicker so it would have a it would have a lower whale count because there's less lines and ridges that's going to fit you know in a specific measurement whereas this one here is a needle cord and it is going to have quite a high whale count because the, ne the cords are like needles, they're very thin. So lots of them fit within an inch measurement. Sometimes they have spandex in them to make them stretchy. Sometimes they're 100% cotton, so they've just got a bit more stiffness to them. But they're gonna be good for things like skirts, trousers, dungaree dresses, dungarees even. Um, so yeah, you know, a nice, a nice weightier fabric that is a little bit thicker and yeah, is, is good for layering up as well. So, you know, if you were made some, like a dungaree or a sort of pinafore style dress with it and then wearing that with maybe like a nice kind of turtleneck long sleeve top underneath is gonna make you feel really nice and warm. The next fabric, potentially a bit controversial that people might think it's warm, but bear with me here. I think sometimes fabrics that can almost like trap air in can make you feel a little bit warmer. And double gauze is one of them. Maybe more commonly associated with being a summery fabric, but because there's like two very fine layers of fabric sort of invisibly stitched together with double gauze, it can just trap that layer of air in the fabric and it does feel quite spongy and you know worn with other items could make you feel nice and warm and cozy it's just got a really lovely texture to it so you know if you had even just a simple top or a shirt like the one I'm wearing just now made with this and again you wore it with a vest or a cardigan or something I think that would actually feel really nice and cozy as a lovely soft fabric and yeah just because it's got that sort of sponginess to it I think it, you know, it, it could feel warm in the right circumstances. The next fabric I've got is fleeced back sweatshirting and we have quite a big range of this in the shop. So I've brought over one of our classic cozy colour ranges and then I've also got one that has got a bit more of a funky design on it. So this is a nice cheetah one and the classic characteristic of these fabrics, these fleece back sweatshirting fabrics, is the reverse of them is very fluffy and brushed and yeah I guess kind of like a little bit fleecy and it does just feel really really cozy next to your skin it feels really soft it feels like almost as if you're wearing a blanket it is very very lovely and soft and it is going to be perfect for jumpers like the green line linden or the toaster or the belly all of those classic jumper patterns hoodie patterns as well you can use it to make cardigans too. So the True Bias Marlowe is a really popular cardigan pattern. Um, but there are other ones out there as well that are a bit, you know, a bit longer, like the Helen's Closet Blackwood, for example. You know, you could make any of those types of garments with this sort of fabric. And just because that really lovely, soft fluffiness next to your skin feels so soft, they do feel really cozy to wear. I think also the, the trapping of air is going to happen in this fabric too, just because it's got a bigger surface area, because it's got that, that kind of fluffy back to it. So, so yeah, we do have lots of sort of plainer colourways in the cosy colour range. 
We do also do and are a totally plain without the little flex organic cotton sweatshirting as well, which has got the fleecy back. And yeah, all of them are good for all the classic jumper patterns and the cardigan patterns as well. Closely related to that is French terry fabric, which also comes in planes and sometimes it comes in patterns or sort of prints as well. And the reverse of that is when you look at it, it's got lots and lots of little loops on it. And again, I think the whole trapping of air situation comes into play here too. It does feel physically thicker than say a regular t-shirt weight jersey fabric. And because it's not quite as heavy as the sweatshirting, I think it crosses quite nicely in between top patterns and sweatshirt patterns. So you could definitely make sweatshirts out of this, but it might feel like a lighter weight sweatshirt. But if you made a t-shirt out of this or a long sleeve top out of this, then it's definitely gonna feel like a thicker, heavier, warmer, type of t-shirt or long sleeve top so you know i'm thinking something like the green line lark for example or you know tilly and the buttons agnes one of those classic t-shirt styles that's you know it's more like a top as opposed to a jumper is good in french terry and it is just a little bit physically thicker and got more sort of substance to it than a regular cotton jersey t-shirt weight Okay, next up is flannel or brushed fabrics and i meant to say this at the beginning but the fabric that I'm wearing right now. Unfortunately, we don't have any of this exact fabric anymore because it was one from um, a couple of years ago. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, um, but it has got a very slightly brushed finish to it as well. It's the Green Line Archer that I've made this up in, but we do have a new range of Robert Kaufman fabrics that are all flannels and they've got that sort of brushed finish to them. So a few different weaves. We've got this one, which is a herringbone weave, but it's got that kind of brushed finish, comes in quite a few different colors. And this is more, I would say, of a sort of medium to heavier weight cotton fabric. So it's 100% cotton, but just the way that it's woven and the fact that it's got that kind of brushed finish on the edge makes it feel a little bit fluffier and a little bit cozier. So we've got this really gorgeous sort of plaid checked one that comes in, there's lots of different sort of styles and colours. You can kind of see them just on the shelves behind me, but I'll show you in some close up videos as well. Um, and again, it's like a little bit thicker. So you could use this type of fabric for a shirt like the one I'm wearing just now. So any sort of classic shirt pattern is gonna look really good in that. You could make a dress in it as well. Um, the only thing I would say about making a dress is that it is probably, if you were wearing it with tights or, le or leggings, it's probably gonna to want to sort of stick to them a little bit. So then you might wanna think about lining it. I'm gonna talk about lining later. Um, I mean, you could just make like a simple top in it as well. PJ is going to be a classic. That would make a lovely pair of PJs. Um, and yeah, definitely just like a physically thicker, fluffier fabric and therefore is going to make you feel nice and warm and cozy. Okay, the next sort of factor that I want to talk to you about is general color palette or color tones of a fabric. And I'm sure you can imagine or sort of understand, or maybe you've even heard um, before, you know, certain colors can evoke different emotions or sort of, um, you know, associations in our brains and make us feel different ways. So actually just wearing colors of fabrics that are warmer or make you think of, you know, warmer things or give you like warm, cozy memories is gonna probably make you feel a little bit warmer as well. Um, and again, probably the reason that I'm sort of highlighting this is because I think a lot of the time people think that fabrics like viscose that is physically a bit thinner is just not really suitable for this time of year. And I would um, disagree with that because I think if you get a fabric that is in a really lovely, a, you know, autumnal or warm color palette that makes you feel warm and you wear it with warm things, whether that's a thick pair of woolly tights or leggings or I'm back to my vests and my undergarments again and cozy cardigans, a cozy woolen cardigan. You know, you can wear these types of fabrics and still feel warm as well. And I think this one's a really lovely example of that. It's got beautiful autumn shades in it, a little bit of sparkle with that doby spot. You know, physically it does feel pretty thin, but it's got really gorgeous draping movement. And if you made a, a lovely dress that had, you know, lots of gathers in it, 
and you know you were physically wearing a lot of fabric and you were wearing it with other warmer layers as well i think you could still feel definitely warmer in this type of fabric so it's just another thing to consider is that don't necessarily rule a fabric out because physically it feels quite thin you know if it if it if the color palette of it sort of evokes warmth for you and you wear it with the other with the right other types of layers and style it in the right way then you can still feel warm in these types of fabrics then the last thing i wanted to cover was actually lining garments um, and adding warmth to something through lining it now obviously there's certain garments that are just lined naturally anyway you know i'm thinking coats and jackets here is a classic example obviously they are usually lined anyway and i would say that when you come to line those types of garments is that when you the, obviously they're designed to be worn over other items you know so if it's like a, a coat or a jacket you're probably going to have something else on underneath whether that's a jumper a cardigan whatever so in the sleeves of that coat or jacket you want to make sure that the lining there is nice and slippery and slidey so that you can get your arm in and out nice and easily especially if it's got a sort of slimmer fit in the sleeve if the sleeves are very big and baggy and oversized then you know it might be okay but you need to use that sort of classic type of lining that is nice and slippery to get your arms in and out but then the main bodice of the garment could be lined with something else so it might even just be lined with a nice pretty patterned cotton lawn for example or you might line it you know with something like that a cotton that's like a flannel and got a sort of brushed finish to it and um, so you can mix and match but really the the function of the slippiness in the sleeves is so that it's easy to get your garment on and off then in terms of say skirts or dresses and lining them again you want to be thinking about what you're going to be wearing underneath because if you're wearing tights or leggings and it is a fabric that's going to sort of kind of stick to that or kind of give some resistance then again you're going to want to use some sort of slippery classic lining that is going to stop that from happening otherwise the garment's just going to keep sticking to your to your legs that are wearing the tights or leggings and um, which might get a little bit annoying after a while so again we're back to the slippery lining but you can add linings to other garments that that you know just mean that you've got an extra layer there for example that aren't necessarily that sort of slippery lining type of fabric you might just line something with another another type of cotton for example so it might just be that you line something with a cotton lawn and physically adding another layer is you know we all know that when you layer up you feel warmer so you say it was a top for example you might just line it with another um, layer of cotton that then goes next to your skin and that sort of makes you feel a little bit warmer and um, i'm not going to go into too much detail in terms of how to do that because i feel that's probably a separate blog post or a tutorial and um, but you know generally speaking the easiest way to line something that doesn't necessarily come with the lining already is that you're going to have to make two of them so say you were making a simple top for example and you were wanted to line it you'd make the top and your main outer fabric you'd make the top and your lining fabric and you would want the hem length of the lining to be a little bit shorter than the main fabric so it didn't hang out at the, at the sleeves or at the bottom and then the easiest way to do it is to attach the two of them at the neck so say you were making a top that normally had bias binding around the neck then depend depending on the thickness of the fabric you could sew your lining and your main top and then baste them together at the neckline so that that was like one layer of fabric there and then just put binding on it like you normally would or it might be that maybe the garment was meant to have a facing around the neckline so in that circumstance you could just sew the lining and the main fabric together with right sides facing trim the seam allowance under stitch it as you would a facing and then just get the like you know then the lining will just naturally sit inside the garment if it's something with a zip then you would again you'd still make two so say it was a skirt you would still have like a skirt made out of lining and a skirt made out of your main fabric but say it had a waistband for example you wouldn't necessarily you wouldn't have a waistband on the lining as you sort of sewed the waistband down on your main skirt you would just make sure you caught the lining within that and um, 
so hopefully that just sort of gives you a little bit of a taste but i can appreciate that's not a full instructions there and um, that will come later i do have another blog post planned that is specifically about skirts and adding a lining to that but yeah in terms of just adding further warmth to your garments you know you can line them to add warmth and depending on the context it might be that it has to be that slippery type of lining or it might just be another type of lining um, like cotton for example and um, we do have a new range of really beautiful lining fabrics in the shop they are cupro benberg cupro linings and they feel very luxurious they're very very silky and sort of satiny i've brought one over here to show you just now but i'll show you all of the colors we've got in the close-up they do feel very very beautiful and they've got that classic sort of slipperiness to them so cupro is made from reconstituted cotton fibers so it's sort of semi semi man-made semi synthetic a bit I guess a bit like viscose really viscose ma is made from the cellulose of trees and um, so so you can get viscose fabric that is viscose lining fabric that is that sort of got those slippery characteristics too they are probably my personal favorites because I feel like they're just a little bit more breathable when you get that classic slippery lining that is either polyester or acetate then sometimes it can be a bit sweatier just because it's not quite as breathable so that's something to bear in mind as well I mean we all want to be warm but there's a difference between being warm and your body being able to breathe and being warm and just being like quite sweaty and a bit you know flustered because you're too hot and you can't cool down and that will happen when you wear synthetic fibers um, so i hope that has given you a little bit of an insight into different types of warm fabrics and their characteristics in terms of what might make them warm do check out the blog post that goes with this video because i have given loads and loads of different specific examples of fabrics you know the ones that i've mentioned here and lots of links to different patterns as well that go with them so um, it's a really good sort of inspiration source if you're looking to make something warm for the autumn winter season if you've got any questions then let me know and thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to my channel already remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video and i'll see you next time bye